Hello, I'm Ms. Havzala, and welcome back to our Making Meaning Lessons for Fourth Grade. Today, we're going to continue the work of determining important ideas and summarizing a text. We read a picture book about Rosa Parks yesterday, and if you did not watch that video, I suggest you go back just so you can hear the story, because we are going to use that same story today in order to do our work. For this lesson, you will need the district packet or a piece of paper will do just fine, a pen or a pencil. There's not really too many turn and talk opportunities, so you don't really need to worry about having a partner. There are um, some chances where you can kind of evaluate your thinking and since we'll do something together, you can kind of I'll give you an opportunity to pause and see how you would answer something, maybe versus how I would answer something or another student. So you'll have an opportunity to kind of play around with that, but you don't really need a partner to be right next to you for this lesson. Just a quick review, um, why are we even doing this work to begin with? And so what we're doing, and I have a review right here up on the screen, is we're determining what the important ideas are and how those can help us understand what we've read. And we do that, what are the important things that have happened in this story? What's essential to know or to remember from this text? Um, and we do that in order to create a summary because remember, and I'll read this right here, summaries are made up of important information from a text and summarizing helps readers understand a text and communicate what it is about. So we don't wanna tell every little detail in a story because that's just called retelling. Summarizing means you can kind of pick out the pieces that are really important to know either about the characters, um, the events that have happened, and that's why we talked a lot about story elements before. So you talked about the characters that are in a text, you talk about the plot or the events that have happened, especially to the characters, any kind of conflict. And so the reason we do all that is because we wanna know what are the highlights, what are the big ideas, what are the main ideas, um, and to make sure that we understand that. If we think that, you know, um, the tiniest little details are really what we want to tell someone about a story, then we're kind of missing the main point. And so that's what the work that we're going to focus on now. And we're going to go step by step together in order to kind of really um, get to that point where we're summarizing all those important pieces. So here's kind of our agenda or our specific task for today. So our work today, and I have we do, so together we will use important ideas, we have to determine them, in an excerpt, which is just like a piece of a story, from a picture book of Rosa Parks to practice writing a summary of that excerpt together. So we're not going to summarize the entire book right now, and we're not going to do the important ideas from the entire book right now. We're just going to take a few pieces and in this section, what's the important idea? In this section, what's the important idea? And you'll see how that's all going to happen. And we're doing that together so that later on you can do the work of preparing you. This week's activities will all prepare you, will prepare you to write summaries of your own books. Okay, so we're doing this book is a book that you didn't choose. It's a book that we're doing together. And you also have your own book you're reading, like your IDR book. Okay, so now begins our work of going piece by piece and reading the excerpt, which are just pieces of the book anyways, and reading pieces of the book and trying to figure out what are the important ideas. So we're going to do the first two together, and I'll kind of guide us through that. And then after that, um, I'll give you a chance. You can pause the video, and then you can try to decide what do you think would be that. Here is where you have a document in your packet. So if you're someone who has picked up your packet or printed your packet, there is a sheet that looks kind of similar to this um but you'll have the on one side you'll have the excerpt the pieces and then you'll have in the margins and the margins are kind of like the side of the paper and so you'll have space in the margins for you to write if you have a highlighter you can use a highlighter as well um, but let's go ahead and try this right now so i'm going to when i put up here what is the section this section about what is most important in this section which sentences give you the most important information? So which sentences? I'm not gonna rewrite the sentence. I'm gonna highlight it. What is this section about? I might write that, I might not, but I definitely wanna write what is most important in this section. So let's go ahead and take a look and scroll down. I'll move down a little bit. So in this part, it's section one, excerpt from A Picture Book of Rosa Parks by David A. Adler. 12 years later, 12 years, section one, 12 years later, on Thursday, December 1st, 1955, Rosa Parks met James Blake again. Rosa was coming home from her work as a tailor's assistant at a Montgomery department store. She got on the Cleveland Avenue bus and took a seat in the middle section. 
African Americans were allowed to sit in the back and in the middle section too, as long as no white passenger was left standing. Okay, so we definitely heard that yesterday and we're hearing it again. So I think that if I look back at this, I think an important idea in this paragraph is that Rosa got on the bus and sit in, sat in the middle section. So I'm gonna maybe highlight that for me. Um, she took a seat in the middle section. So that seems kind of important to me. And um, let me go back and now I can type. Okay, so I think, and I might just, since I'm taking notes, not even right, I think. So she got on the bus and sat in the middle section. Okay. Um, I don't really think, I mean, it's important in terms of history, but I don't think I really need to include the day, the exact day it happened. Um, she met James Blake again. That's kind of interesting. I don't know if it matters so much though. I mean, it's an interesting fact to me. I could definitely go back and highlight it just to make myself feel satisfied. That's kind of interesting. This guy, she, she meets this guy again. Um, but I think she got on the bus and sat in the middle section. I'm going to move on to section two. Hey, same question. What is the section about? What is most important in the story? Which sentence gives you the most important information? So the first section, what it was about was just her getting on that bus and choosing to sit in the middle section. She's getting off work and that's what's happening. So let's look, look at section two. At the next stop, some white passengers got on and because the bus was crowded, moved to the middle section where Rosa was sitting. The driver told the four African-American passengers in Rosa's row to get up. Three of them did, but wrote, but not Rosa Parks. She had paid the same fare as the white passengers. She knew it was the law in Montgomery that she give up her seat, but she also knew the law was unfair. James Blake called the police and Rosa Parks was arrested. So what is this section about? This section is specifically about the time that she was told to get up and chose to not get up, okay? So she was told to get out of her seat um, for the white passengers and she is not getting out of her seat she is making that decision what is most important in this section so i think the most important thing is that she um didn't did not get up uh, i'm going to also do a little highlighting so um she didn't get up that's important and she was arrested i think that's really important so james blake called the police and rosa parks was arrested um three of them did but rosa parks did not so I'm just going to highlight that as well. Um, and I think this is important because it's a really important event. So I'm just going to write, this is an important event when Rosa gets arrested. Okay. And let's go ahead and move on to the next section. So here's where I'm going to read this section and then you can pause the video if you like and you can decide what you think is the most important idea. It might be different than mine. And then we can, you can add in mine to yours, you can change yours or you can stick with what you think is important. So oh, section three, on Monday, December 5th, Rosa went to the local court and was found guilty of breaking the segregation laws. She was fined $10 plus court costs. Rosa and her lawyers appealed to a higher court. So for me, I think um, on Monday, December 5th, uh, it's, it's important in terms of history, but maybe not important for this, went to the local court and was found guilty. So I think guilty of breaking the segregation laws, that seems important to me because that means she was breaking the law, but she was breaking a law that was unfair. And I think that's an important distinction. And they appealed to a higher court. So they decided that that wasn't going to be the end of it. So I think that's also really important too, because that means the fight carries on. So for me, I'm gonna write, um, you know, Rosa was guilty of breaking a law that she found to be unfair and we read that earlier and then 
I'm just going to write appealing to a higher court. I'm going to say um, equal sign um, continuing the fight. Okay, and you don't need full sentences because it's just notes. Moving on to section four. Beginning on December 5th, to protest the arrest of Rosa Parks, African Americans in Montgomery refused to ride on public buses. They found other ways to get to work. Many walked, some as far as 12 miles. So pause now if you want to come up with your own. I think to protest the arrest of Rosa Parks is really important because that means when you protest something, you're not agreeing with it. You're often asking for change, um, hopefully. So protests usually are like a call to action and you want something to change. And African-Americans in Montgomery refuse to ride on public buses. That's kind of huge because the bus boycott is what helped to change the law. So that act, the people taking a stand and choosing, even though it probably was very difficult, it says some people walked as far as 12 miles. So even though it was probably pretty difficult for them, um, they were thinking really about the bigger picture, like, you know, we need to do something to change. And I, I'm reading into things now, but we need to do something, you know, big to get a big change. And so I'm going to say um, African, Americans in Montgomery protested Rosa protested Rosa's arrest and by refusing to ride on public buses. Okay, so that's a kind of a big idea to me. And moving on to our last section, the bus boycott was led by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the new minister at the Dexter Avenue Baptist Church. On Monday evening, December 5th, he spoke to a large crowd. He explained the reason for the boycott. There comes a time, he said, that people get tired. We are here this evening to say to those who have mistreated us so long that we are tired, tired of being segregated and humiliated, tired of being kicked about by the brutal feet of oppression. Okay, so... Um, the bus boycott was led by Dr. Martin Luther King. I think that's pretty important because it kind of illustrates the work that was being done and who are these activists doing the work. Um, so that's important to me. The fact he's a new minister, I don't know if that's really that important um, in terms of understanding this piece. On Monday evening, he spoke to a large crowd. He explained the reason for the boycott. So the reason there comes a time that the people get tired and um, you often hear a quote about Rosa Parks that she, she said she was tired and, you know, she had dealt with this bus driver before. So thinking about all the things that have happened, um, she's kind of fed up with this situation and they've been mistreated for so long. So that's that discrimination word that, that we've learned before about the brutal, f uh, feat of oppression. So being kicked, that's like a really vivid image of, that's not like nice imagery of, um, Dr. King uses nice imagery of how it f possibly could feel. He's talking about humiliation, being segregated. And so here I'm going to write um, bus boycott led by Dr. Martin Luther King. Okay, I mean, you could say one sentence and that would ki kind of illustrate things. But I think the fact that he's also, um, you know, describing, um, so I'll say African Americans were tired. And we don't necessarily always mean physically tired. There's like a mental, being mentally tired and um, being emotionally tired, being um, exhausted with the whole situation, being fed up. Um, so we're tired of being kicked about by the brutal feet of oppression. Okay, so we've done our part. We've taken our notes on these sections. 
And you always, of course, whenever you're doing a summary or you're note taking, you can go back and look at the text if you want. That's always an option. Um, these are the notes that we took and we were pretty stingy with our notes. We kept it to just like one or two sentences in sections that had much more sentences. So hopefully that makes our summary later on concise and clear so we don't have a lot of extra details that aren't things that we really need. All right, that was a lot of great work we just did trying to pick out the important ideas in order to create a summary. So that's not really an easy task because sometimes our, um, our the side of us that is like, oh, that's interesting and that's interesting. We wanna include that in a summary. And then we have to decide, well, that's interesting to us, but is it really kind of the most important detail of a story? Does that really help summarize or is that just kind of to us a really interesting fact or a really interesting detail? So we want to make sure that we're able to discern or choose between the two of those things um, and just really be very critical and thoughtful when we choose those things. So today for IDR, I'm going to continue reading my book, Front Desk by Kelly Yang. We want to read at least 30 minutes and we want to practice identifying important, idea, important ideas and supporting details. So it, think about are there any events that are happening to your character, conflict, any major change that is happening with your character and making sure you're reading a just right book. So if you're picking up something that you know is maybe it's one of your parents books or it's a book that you, you know, it's kind of challenging for you, but so challenging you can't focus, it's not a just right book. And if it's a book that you picked up and you just zipped right through it and you're all done um, in the first five minutes, then that's probably not challenging you enough. So make sure that you're picking out something that works for you and um, there are options if you would need if you need some help picking out some books.